My dearly beloved in Christ, in our Palm Sunday ceremonies of the blessing and distribution of palms and especially the procession of the palms, we try to recreate and go back in our mind to imagine what it was like when our Lord entered the holy city five days before his passion and death, when he entered in triumph, and imagine the jubilation of the people that their greatest benefactor, he who had cured so many, who spoke to them the words of eternal life, was entering their city and how joyful they were. And they cut down palm branches and laid them in the ground. And they cried out saying, Hosanna to the son of David, words that were reserved for the Messiah. And the Pharisees were angry and tried to silence the people. And they told the apostles, tell them to stop saying these things. And our Lord heard this and he said, if they are silent, even the stones will cry out. So our Lord allowed this public homage to him before his passion and death. But we think of these people crying out these hosannas joyfully, accompanying our Lord, even taking off their cloaks and laying them on the ground and considering it an honor that the donkey on which our Lord sat would walk upon their own garments, their cloaks. <clears throat> and again, what a joy they had. And why did the people do this? Well, once again, because of all the good that our Lord had done, but also because it was easy to do because of the large number of people. Everyone joined in. Once again, it was easy. Everyone else was doing it. But five days later, on Good Friday, the same crowd shouted out, crucify him. Why? Because the Pharisees, in their envy and hatred of our Lord, were stirring up the people to call for his death. And even those who loved our Lord found it difficult to publicly profess their faith, their loyalty to him. But if you read the story of the Passion, there was one man, one person alone, who spoke out publicly in defense of our Lord. All the others either denied him, called out for his death, shouted blasphemies at him, or ran away and hid. When our Lord was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, the disciples fled. And then, when he was in the court of the high priest, Peter and John went, and Peter was warming himself at the fire, and he was asked if he was a disciple. No, he denied it. Why? Because he was afraid. It was easy, once again, on Palm Sunday, to proclaim loyalty and love and faith in our Lord. Not so easy on Good Friday. But the one bright spot is that there was one man who publicly defended our Lord. And you know who that was? He was a thief, a robber. The Jews wanted our Lord to be humiliated. They didn't just want him to die. They wanted him to be crucified. Crucifixion was a torturous death that the Romans used for the most egregious criminals. The Jewish people would never use crucifixion. In fact, in the Mosaic law, if someone was guilty of a capital crime and was to be executed, it was often done by stoning. Remember the gospel story of the woman arrested for adultery and she was about to be stoned to death and our lord said let him who is out without sin cast the first stone at her so that's what the jews did and when they scourged a criminal they were told that they were never to do so more than 40 times lest that person depart from them covered with wounds that was the Mosaic law. And so 
lest they exceed the number allowed, they would scourge a person 40 times less one, 39 lashes, so that they wouldn't break the law. So the, Jew, the Jewish manner of punishment was, of course, more humane. But the Romans had no scruples. And someone who was guilty of a grave crime was often crucified. A terrible torture. And is it not interesting that the very image of the cross, which was the sign of the greatest humiliation and the greatest suffering, is now the greatest honor. We put crosses upon our churches. We have crucifixes in our home. Constantine, who became emperor in 312, one of the first things he did as emperor is that he issued an edict that death by crucifixion was eliminated forever. And the Roman Empire was not to be done. And he did this partly out of respect for our Lord who died on the cross. And Jesus allowed himself to be put to death in such a cruel and a terrible manner because of his excessive love for us to prove the greatness of his love. But he not only was put to death in such a terrible manner, he was also put to death in a humiliating way. He was crucified between two thieves. And in the, in the Passion, the evangelists say he did this that he would fulfill the prophecy that he was reputed among the wicked. So not only did our Lord lay down his life, not only did he do so in the midst of such suffering, he also did so in a way that was humiliating. You might say losing his honor. And as he hung there on the cross, his enemies, the leaders of the Jewish people, were there mocking him. Ah, thou that de would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross and we will believe you. And they were blaspheming him and mocking him. And he did nothing. He died in the midst of this mockery, this humiliation. But there was that one man who defended him. And he was a thief. And he hung to the cross on our Lord's right of these two thieves. This man had been guilty of many crimes, perhaps even of murder, we don't know. He was justly being put to death. And we see in his defense of our Lord several wonderful acts. One was an act of contrition. And another was an act of public accusation, self-accusation. He said to his companion on the other side of our Lord, who joined the Jewish leaders mocking our Lord. He said, don't you fear God? We suffer justly, but this man has done no evil. So he publicly defended our Lord, and he acknowledged his own crimes, and he acknowledged that he was justly being punished for his crimes. It's something like we do when we go to confession. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's a, an accusation, a self-accusation. And then the humble confession of our sins. So this man did that. And then he turned to our Lord and said, Remember me, Lord, when thou shalt come into thy kingdom. And our Lord, who in his goodness, his love, so often gives much more than we ask, promised him not only he would remember him, but that this thief, now repentant, would be with him in paradise that very day. Now, by tradition, that good thief, as we call him, is referred to as Saint Dismas. He is honored as a saint because our Lord canonized him by his own lips. This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Churches have been built in his honor. 
The Roman Martyrology mentions him on March the 25th, but without using the name. But by tradition, he is referred to as Saint Dismas. And I believe that he is a powerful saint because of his public defense of our Lord. In the Passion, there is no other account of anyone coming out publicly defending our Lord resisting the general flow, the general trend of mockery and contempt and calling out for crucifixion and and rejection of our Lord. So note the difference. How easy it was on Palm Sunday, how difficult on Good Friday. And that's why this thief was especially honored because he did something that was difficult. His conscience told him our Lord was innocent. He publicly professed it and begged for mercy. What a wonderful story. It's interesting that the account of the good thief and his public profession is only given us by St. Luke. We do not have the seven last words of our Lord are taken from different Gospels. An evangelist might mention one or two or three of the last words of our Lord, but we put all four Gospels together And we come up with the seven things that our Lord said as he hung on the cross and died for us. The first was, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Praying for his executioners, begging for their conversion and forgiveness. And then the second word was a promise of paradise to what the one we call the good thief. How this man changed having been a criminal, and how he changed because he responded to his conscience that was telling him our Lord was innocent. So that is, we might say, a bright spot in the tragic story of our Lord's terrible passion and death. Let us this week reflect every day upon our Lord's many sufferings endured for us, and let us pray that we will be like the good thief, that we will publicly confess our Lord when no one else does because our conscience tells tells us that we must do so and that we will be careful not to go with the flow, not to just follow the crowd, but to do what is right, whether it is difficult or easy, always to do what is right. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen.